Good morning and welcome to the First Baptist Church of Kimberling City's RPM Daily Devotionals, reaching the lost for Christ, preparing the saints for service, and magnifying the Lord. Now let's join Associate Pastor Paul Green as he brings us today's message. Well, good morning. It's Paul Green, First Baptist Church, Kimberling City, Missouri. And it's so good to have you with us this morning as we share with you some words from the Lord this morning in our morning devotional. A time when we can come to the Lord and just uh, get into His Word and have some truths for the day that our time and span upon this earth might be a little bit better because we've been with the Lord. And so it's a pleasure to have you this morning. It's a beautiful morning in the Ozarks. The weather's in about the mid-60s this morning, but we're headed up to the low 90s probably. But right now it's just a tremendous thing to share in the coolness and uh, the beauty of the creation that God has given us. So what a blessing. If you have your Bibles, open them again to First uh, John chapter 2, if you will, please. And we're going to hit the, the highlights to get us where we want to go this morning. But in uh, doing so, we'll start there, sort of looking at verses 12 and continue on and as we make progress in this. And uh, this is one of the letters that John the Apostle wrote. And of course, he's writing for a purpose, and that is to help us as Christians to overcome and to grow in our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And we, in past weeks, we have shared with you that the first thing we need to do is to establish a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. The Christian life begins with that relationship when we come to the time when God calls us into his kingdom and we invite him to come into our heart and to save us. And so from that time, it's a time of growing. And then after we have that particular thing of a relationship, we need to have a fellowship. And in today's time that we're living in, it's so important to have a right fellowship. You, not just with anybody and uh, out in the world in which we live, because there's so many thoughts out there about what it means to be a Christian, or can I live my life without Christ, or, you know, what am I to do, or how am I to grow, and what uh, type of example can I be, and, and do I have to do this and do that? And so John is sharing with us some of those particular things involving our relationship and a fellowship. And the church is so important, and for you that do not have a, a place uh, where you can gather and have fellowship with other, with other believers in Christ, you're missing a great blessing because the Lord himself said that this is what we're supposed to do. Be baptized and, of course, begin to, to grow into a church and be part of the body of Christ that's serving here in this particular area in which we're living. And so before we get into our our scripture this morning, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, into your presence we come this morning. We come with thankful hearts and praising you, Father, and thanking you for our good night's rest. And one, Father, as we awaken this morning, that, Lord, how beautiful it was, the sun rising and cool, and what a blessing, Father. Thank you for blessing us with the, with the weather and the time and just uh, that refreshing breeze that's there. And so this morning we come into your presence, Father. We praise you and thank you and ask you to strengthen us in our time of need. For we're living at a time of a great trials and tribulation with the coronavirus, Father, that's rampant. And people just do not seem to take it serious. And Father, it reminds me of, of how some people do not take you serious or your word. And they think that the words and the scripture and the Bible are just there to maybe to lift us up. But Father, that they do not have to, to follow those and be obedient. And so as a result, the world is in the shape that it's in today. Father, we pray that the, our a cure will be found. We pray, Father, that this old world of ours would would find you and that, Father, there would be peace in the valley. Thank you now. Thank you for the joy of our salvation and for the time that you've given us. In Jesus' precious name, we ask it all. Amen. 
So John has been writing to us about <clears throat> our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And, of course, this is one of the last books that he, he wrote in there. And so as a result of that, he has some great teachings for us. Many are wondering, you know, after you get saved, what, do I, what am I supposed to do? And we've talked before about this thing of fellowship, how important it is that you uh, join together with other believers in Christ, that you might grow in grace and peace and knowledge. And you know, as we grow, we find that God has some particular things for us, has some great things that he wants us to do. And then all we have to do is be obedient and to follow him and he'll show us what we're to do and give us the what we need to accomplish that task that he wants us to, to complete. So it's a great time. It's a time when we rejoice with our, father, our believers and brothers and sisters in Christ and that we begin to grow in a spiritual way that God would have us to grow. You know, as we study God's word, I hope you understand come to the realization that John is not just uh, teaching us about the spiritual things, and he's not trying so much to raise a, a spiritual individual as he is try, to try and show us what a man or a godly woman is supposed to be, how we're supposed to grow with grace and peace and knowledge, and when we learn the things that we should and we display those and we share those with the people around us, we become an individual that could be the leader of his family, the leader in the community, and one that God can use. He, what he wants us to do is to be a mature individual. That's what God wants. He's not going to try to make us a, a spiritual giant but he just wants us as individuals to accomplish the fact that we grow in the, in the physical realm and able to work in the world in which we live. And so today as he, we continue with the study here, he, we'll start here real quickly in verse 12 and, and look at 12 through 17. And he's talking here, it says, and uh, I'm using the King James Version, in uh, First John chapter 1, uh, here in, he's talking about our relationship and the joy that we have. And then in verse 17 of chapter 2, he begins, And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, and he who does the will of God abides forever. Now, He's talking here in verse 17 about an individual who is living in a world that we li know that we're living in the last times. And that shouldn't be new to any of us because of the simple fact, well, it's been the last times ever since Christ came on this earth. And from the time that he, he was crucified and again was resurrected, then he Stamp, put a stamp on time and said, these are the last times. In other words, there's going to be a time when he's going to come again, and he's going to come in all of his glory. The first time he came as our Savior, the next time that he comes, he's going to be the Redeemer and following what the Father wanted, but then comes the judgment. And he would like for all of us to reach that point in our life where when it, it does happen, that we will be with him in the kingdom of heaven. You know, this scripture is very, very clear that only those that come through Jesus Christ will see the kingdom of heaven. In fact, in John 14, he says that, that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes unto the Father except through him. And so as individuals, there's only one way we can get to heaven, and that is through the Lord Jesus Christ. So he begins here in, in with the talking to the, the people and, uh, that he wants to share with about the love of God and how God is working in their lives and how they need to continue to grow and not be swayed by the, all of those people that are around. 
So in verse 12, he says, I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. Now, he says here to the little children, he's meaning the, the new birth. And for us who believe that children that are born are totally innocent of all sins, and then he says here that your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake, and his name's sake is God's sake. You know, for us to, to get to heaven, we have to have all of our sins forgiven. And a newborn child, of course, coming into the world, the only sins that he has is that the sins of his uh, parents in there. And so as a result of that, God has said that children like that are at a state of innocency. And that if something would happen to them, if they happen to, to pass on, they would go directly to heaven because God said that he looked at those sins which were he had forgiven because they did not have the opportunity to make a choice. A person has to choose where he's going to spend eternity. And the little children do not do that. And this is one of our proof texts that we use that uh, children are in a state of innocency and by that I mean, and uh, scholars point out that you're in a state of innocency until you know the difference between right and wrong. And so whatever age that that is, whenever you begin to know the difference between right and wrong, then you become accountable, and God would have you uh, then pay for those particular sins that you've committed. And of course, as a Christian, we have an intervener, one that will hear our prayers and, and take them to the Father in, in return. When we ask him to forgive our sins, he does exactly that, and we stand innocent in the eyes of God. And so the little child is innocent. Up to what age, depending upon the child, whenever he begins to know the difference between doing right and wrong. And then after that, he goes ahead and says, And I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. And fathers, you're supposed to be an example, and you're supposed to be the ones that are uh, sharing God's word with your children and your family and your friends and all. And he's talking to mature Christians now, those that are in the church, and he's saying you need to do more than just sit around and, and be an ornament sitting in a pew someplace, but you need to be sharing what God has done for you and how you have reached this point in your life. And so we as Christians continue to grow. We grow from a babe until full maturity as a father in sharing truths with our children. And you know, the best gospel that a young child can see is their parents. And in doing so, they see how the parents handle things, how they uh, do things, and as a result of that, they normally will pattern their lives after that example. And so it is important that you be a shining example for your child. Dad, you need to be the hero. Now, I have nothing against heroes. They're great. Uh, you know, that's, we're going through that time and children and all that they're having is superheroes. You know, when we were growing up, it was somebody else, uh, the Lone Ranger or Hop Lone Cassidy or somebody, the good guys. And so as a result, they were always used as examples. But Dad, you're supposed to be that example. Mom, you're supposed to be that example so that your child will know what it means to be a mature Christian in following the days that he has given us here on earth. Many times our children get married and go out into the world, but they haven't had any training. And as a result, the world exerts more influence upon them than the family has in the past, and they can become a part of the world rather than a part of the church. I don't know where we go wrong with our children. 
But when children are more involved in the world than they are in the church, then something is wrong. And my children and Kate, our children are just like that. They're involved in the world. They're great individuals. But they think more of the world than they do of the church at times. They'd rather be in the world than they would be in the church. And yet when we talk to them, they say, well, we know all of that, and we believe, and, you know, we're saved and all of that. But God is one that does not want just lip service. He wants to see a committed individual, one that is totally sold out and living what he says that he believes. If you believe Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, then you need to live a life that proves that. You need to be following Jesus more than you, you can uh, the world out there. You know, one of the things that we have is we have so much free time in the world in which we live. And with that free time, we have many things to occupy that time. Uh, personal experience with me, of course, is that, excuse me, I knew that uh, we were not to have any gods before me before the Lord himself. And so in our life, as Kay and I and our children were being raised, I found myself following uh, the sport of golf. And uh, I wasn't too bad of a golfer, but it came to the point that I was thinking more about golf than I was about the Lord himself. And I was spending a little more time out on the golf course than I was and study and growing and doing the things that God wanted me to do. And so through the years, of, it finally came to a point where I realized that my idol had changed from the Lord Jesus Christ to a game that's called golf and along with that was football and sports and things of this nature. So I had to make a decision as to who I was going to follow. I gave up golf for many years. My other profession was a football coach. I finally gave that up, got out of that. And finally, the Lord began to work in our life when I began to be obedient in the things that he wanted me to do. And as I grew in grace with the Lord, then the time came when I began to to realize that truly God was the one and the only. And so as a result of that, our life has been good. And I just pray that our children will find that their God might be whatever out in the world. But you can't stay home and say that I love the Lord and I love the things of the Lord when you do not love his people in being in the church that practices and preaches and teaches God's word. And so John is writing to the fathers here, and he says, you've known him all the time. You've been in the, uh, a Christian a long, long time. And by that, others should know that you're a Christian by the things that you do, by the words that you say, by the actions that you have. You need to be the leader of your family, mom and dad. You need to let the children know what it means to be a godly parent so that when they have children, they'll know what they're supposed to do in raising their family. And then he says in verse 14, I have written to you fathers from the beginning. I have written to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the wicked one. So he's writing to all three, and he's saying, you know, I've talked to you before, we've warned you about false teachers and, and those that would lead you astray, but you need to understand and go, I guide the lives of the ones around you and to grow the way that you should. And then in verse 15 through 17, and he says, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. 
For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. So he gives us a warning here in verses 15 through 17. He says, don't love the things of the world. Don't get caught up in it. Don't get caught up in the things that's going to lead you away from God. Instead, concentrate and love the things that God has shared with us. It's a blessing to be a, a, a child of God, but to be away from him and not consider that you've missed something, it's a shame because God wants you to be a shining example, Dad. You need to be the hero of your children. They need to look to you as somebody special. You know, in some cases we need to quit being their pal and we need to start being their parent, their mom and dad. And we need to grow them in the way of the Lord. These are words that you need to ponder, that you can ponder and you can uh, get in and, and study. And let me share with you on studying. Make sure you study the Bible and not a book that might teach about the Bible. There's nothing wrong with books that enlighten us and cast more light upon the scriptures. But to grab a book that somebody has written on how to live or how to do something and call that the way that God wants us to go is not correct. If you don't want to know what God has to say about something, then study His Word. Study the Bible. Do a Bible study and not a book study. And so, as we close today, God wants to use you in a in a mighty way. So be mature, be obedient, and love the heart, Lord with all of your heart, with all of your might. Thank you until we see you again, until we meet. Be with us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come into your presence again. How good it is to know, Father, that you're looking after us, and that, Father, we is your child. We need to be obedient, for it is the only way that you really know whether we're serious or not about following you and being your child. Father, as we come, we don't want to be like the world, just give lip service, just to say something to get people off our back. But Father, we want to let you know we believe the word and we want to take it to heart. We want it to take root there, Father, that we might be better examples, that we might be a living witness for you wherever we might go. We praise you and thank you now, for it's in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that we ask it all. Amen. Thank you again for joining us today. We invite you to watch RPM Daily Devotionals each week, Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. on YouTube and Facebook. For more information on First Baptist Church and its ministries, go to fbckc.com. From First Baptist Church of Kimberling City, have a blessed day.